Hey there, it's Rebecca, Noir Artist, and we're going to be taking an adventure to doing a background. This is a longer video. These are the images I'm going to be using to create this background. Now, this one is going to be the base and mainly the color. I love the color of this but I am not going to be fully using it. It's just going to be my background where everything blends into it. So right now I've made a copy and then another copy. I'm going to mask each copy that I just made and in that mask I am going to split up the areas of this image. Now I don't know if this is because it's not listed on deposit photo as a um, AI image. To me it looks like one, but I am not using it for its image. I got, like I said, I'm going to be using it for the color scale. So I've got both areas blocked off. I'm going to bring one of them into my document. Um, I'm rearranging how I want it to look in the document and then I'm going to go in and soften up a few edges, put my soft tip on uh, a lower opacity because I don't want specifics showing through. Like I said, I'm using this for the color. Get that moon in there, flip it around, and blend it out. Now I've gone in using Alt and clicking on the thumbnail for the mask and I am clearing out anything I messed up and finishing out the black to the mask so I don't have any lines. Now I'm going to use this again. I have it from Deposit Photo. I am using the marble aspect of it. And sorry that black spot was because I forgot to take it off a brush and painting. So I've applied it to the section and as I'm going through each of the blend modes I'm noticing that having those two pieces right across from each other really isn't working. So what I'm going to do is do some um, curves, color adjustment, add in the white fill, see how I uh, want the blend mode on that, and even that's kind of messing things up with the two being right next to each other. So I am going to shift some things around. First, I want to find what I like about the marble. Now I'm bringing in the white fill and changing the opacity and how much is pulling in through levels. Trying to change out the blend mode to see if I still need to move the two pieces in the background. I love this look, so yes, I need to move the two pieces. I have moved the marble behind the two pieces. Now I'm shifting the moon to the other corner so that I can take advantage of the drastic details of the marble in this between the two. I've added curves. I'm going to change and bring in more of the purple and I want to bring in more teal. So I'm in, this is actually in print mode. So I'm going into the cyan, the magenta, and then the yellow and black to make my adjustments. My adjustments in that are mainly on the lighter aspect because I want the depth so that I have difference in um, color, giving me distance, everything like that. Now I'm bringing the white fill in. I'm using the uh, levels, also my curves. Just adjusting. I love my color fill. I love to use the blend mode. And I just want to make sure that I just tweak this exactly where I want it. Too much pink. A lot more cyan and that's where I want I don't want to lose the purple 
but I definitely want to bring in more of the cyan. So I'm really manipulating this line. If there's an area that you want on your curves line to stay put, anchor it, and then shift the other side and you, you won't lose that. Now I have a marble that I also got from Deposit Photo. I previously cut it out. Deposit Photo actually has a ability now where the, it can just take the background for you. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Now this is the a blue moon, as you can see, and I'm going to be using it also as part of the uh, Azura moon for this uh, Azure moon, actually, is what it's, it, how it's pronounced. Um, so I just came in with the mask, got some of that black out of there, and always remember to name your layers going into the blend mode to find exactly the one that I want to use. Pen light honestly is perfect so often. So ever so often you'll see I'm looking at color lookup to see if there's any way I can use it. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Here color lookup is perfect. And I'm going through and using different ones. A lot of the times when I want that really deep night the Midnight or Moon Night is really a perfect 3D color lookup to use over top. And when I am working on specifics, I do crop the image so that I don't have this massive thing that is overpowering and I have to zoom way out to adjust my image. Now here you're going to see I am going through all the modes and I like them. I think it's great, but there's still something wrong and I apologize. I have the hiccups all of a sudden right now. So I deleted that layer and then went back to the original where I started. And here I went in to adjust the colors. Um, didn't like the color lookup that I had, so I'm going into curves. Took me a moment to find it. Sometimes those icons, I forget which one it is. And I'm moving the light so I can see if I can bring some more brightness into the blue. Now I put a white behind. This is the blue here is because of the color lookup. And I want to just use this smoke. I'm using it as a, I guess you could say, a gas that's a, in the space area. So I've gone in, moved it over in smart objects, applied a mask, removed the light blue, because I don't want extra light blue. And now I'm going through and uh, seeing what blend mode I want to use. Now, using Free Transform, I'm applying it, adjusting it, seeing what I can do with it, seeing what I like, making a copy, doing another shift of it, and seeing what else I like, removing anything that I missed. And as you can see, I've made three copies, and each one I am adjusting. Now, remember, when you do what I just did, which was three copies of one a uh, smart object. Whatever you correct or do within the smart object, all three of them will adjust. So make that note. I'm using these rocks um, from Deposit Photo. I just looked up uh, zinc rocks. And I'm using just a, a small area of it, making sure I grab the large rock and some other larger and smaller pieces. Going in, tightening, and um, making sure that the mask has a blur to it and then I'm applying it and going for that blend mode. I want it to look like the um, because this is the end of Azure Moon I want it to look like it has exploded and these are all um, rocks that are left floating around. So I've made another copy and I'm moving it around to accent that large 
uh, rock area and now I've made another copy and it's going to actually go into a different blend mode to bring more gasish type of a look to the space area. Clouds, um, more depth, um, more of, you know, everything is deep in the background, but also I've got these clouds that are close along with the, the rocks, which are really close. And, but they're all blurred so that when I put the middle ground in, she's still going to show very nicely, which I'll, you'll see soon. Now I'm doing the color dodge to bring more light, more glow into this spacey type of a background. I almost said a space odyssey, but that's not where we're at. It's definitely a cosmos with lots of gases and smokes, and I'm just letting the creativity go. I started with an idea, which looking at it now, do you even see anything of that first image? No, but you still see the color tone that I used from it. Matter of fact, everything has taken on a different look. And that's what I love doing about this. Yes, you could go to an AI and have them put it together, but this, this is the fun part. This is, this is where you are able to personally make this so creative and cool. Like right now, I'm trying to pull in more of the Azure. So I'm using the um, color burn to bring in more darkness using the actual um, teal color. So here I have made a image copy of this, put it all together into a smart object so I can easily access it, and then move it to my actual document for that I'm working on. And next, as I get everything settled in, I'm bringing in different aspects of the world that just became destroyed. So here I have color. I did this in a previous, I didn't record it, I do apologize, but it is a actually a bridge over water that I used different color lookups and color modes over to change the color along with levels. And these are all um, different sapphire type of crystals that I'm using as uh, rocks and pieces for what's left of the planet. We all know the Azure is a crystal and that's what I'm trying to just hint at in here, the leftover crystals of the planet. Using uh, curves, using my modes, while I put this in here, I'm going to use the blend if on, on the underlying layer where I'm using uh, alt and the arrows to get half modes so that I can blend this in so I can get some more of the clouds coming through, bring the opacity down. And I have now gone in with the mask and I'm just softening up areas. I want really to have a lot of the clouds coming through but I don't want to lose the texture of the crystals. Go back, as you work on your piece, go back and bring in, um, take back out. As you play and work with it, you will see what you're actually looking for, or you may find something different. I really had a lot of fun working on these crystals trying to get um, still keep the depth and uh, distance in them, keeping the texture without losing any of the clouds that are working and the gases working around them. I brought the bridge forward only because I need to do some more adjustments and I couldn't see it back there. 
doing some more movement of uh, just shifting it around because I was noticing the composition really wasn't working because I need to bring this rock in. And I'm using this rock again. I didn't record it and I'm honestly glad I didn't because ultimately it really wasn't the right one. I'm still going to try and work with and play with this. And there's my little lady. She's still in process, but I really don't like how she looks in this whole aspect. So I'm going to remove the rock. I'll bring in my uh, title and everything for you. Please like, subscribe, ring that bell, and you'll see how Azura rocks when I get the new one in.